study several different uh, aspects of retinal repair and retinal diseases. And what I want to really focus on are two programs that we're working on currently in our lab. Um, these are academic programs at this point. Um, the first one has to do with retinal regeneration. In many species that are sort of non-mammalian species like ourselves, like, uh, particularly amphibians and even birds, um, we found that retina will repair very well. And so after retinal injury or degeneration, there's a cell type called the Mueller glial cell in the retina. Um, it's this elongated cell that spans the whole width of the retina. And this cell will actually become a, serve as a retinal stem cell and regenerate all the different types of retinal neurons that are lost. So for example, in a photoreceptor disease or a ganglion cell disease, these cells will, um, these, these Mueller glia will respond to the injury and regenerate the retina. And in these lower panels, uh, you can see normal rods uh, in green, and then after an injury, a light damage, the rods are all gone. But in this, um, in this species, this is in a zebrafish, the rods get replaced within a few weeks. So um, we studied this process of regeneration in these uh, lower vertebrates and found that there were some genes that were missing, that were present in those lower vertebrates that were missing in mammals. And one of these genes was a transcription factor called ASCL1. And last year we found that if we overexpressed ASCL1 in the Mueller glia of mice, um, in this case we used a transgenic approach, and then we injured the retina. For the first time, we could see retina regeneration in mice. And so this one transcription factor is able to actually reprogram the Mueller glia of mice into functional neurons. And so we can see, we could even patch onto these neurons and see light responses. So neurons in mammalian retina now, for the first time, can regenerate and form functional connections and integrate with the circuit. Um, we, think that ultimately this could become a therapy. It's still obviously an emerging technology. But for the fish and birds spontaneous to regenerate, but in mice, if we add back this key transcription factor, we can get mice mueller glial cells to respond just like the fish do and regenerate new neurons. The neurons wire into the retinal circuit and they function normally. So ultimately we think that we could develop this into a, a gene therapy where we could put this uh, gene ASCL1 into um, into Mueller glia and then potentially induce their, uh, pr their ability to restore retinal neurons in cases in patients where those have been lost. So that's the first program I want to tell you about. The second program is a little bit further along in terms of its development and hopefully we will, we'd like to see this uh, developed into a clinical product in the next few years. Um, these are uh, drugs we call, uh, potential drugs, molecules we call photoregulins. And uh, we think that these might be useful in treating retinitis pigmentosa or uh, inherited retinal disease. So um, there are two transcription factors, NRL and NR2E3, that are needed for normal rod development. And um, gene targeting, uh, genetic targeting of NRL or NR2E3 has shown that if we knock, if these genes are knocked out, the rods don't uh, express most of their um, most of the genes that they normally would, and they become a sort of an immature state of rods. Now, why that's important is if the rods don't express some of the genes that cause retinitis pigmentosa, then they don't die. And so essentially what happens is if you knock um, out the gene NRL in a mouse that has a retinitis pigmentosa mutation in rhodopsin, and we can see that in panel B at the top, then that, that mouse, that partially rescues or stops the progression of the, of the rod disease. So we have um, developed molecules that will target these, uh, the, an NR2E3, which is an orphan nuclear receptor uh, that's, that's responsible for rod gene expression. And um, we screened a number of different uh, chemical libraries for molecules that will uh, reduce rhodopsin and other rod gene expression. And what we find is that um, we found three series that we're currently working on and doing SAR to try and find um, you know, better, more potent molecules. Um, but um, what, one of these, uh, PR3, we're particularly excited about, and we have, our, have a grant through the foundation and the Harrington Foundation to further develop this molecule. Um, what happens is when we treat mice that have retinitis pigmentosa mutations, um, in this case, we can see um, in the middle panels, we see on the DMSO condition, the ONL is getting very, very thin in this mouse because there's significant degeneration. Um, whereas in the PR3-treated mouse, we keep the ONL thickness healthy and stop the rod disease progression. Now, 
the rods are still not functional under these cases, but, they're, but they provide enough uh, trophic support still to keep the cones alive. And so typically in retinitis pigmentosa, after rods degenerate, the cones will degenerate and people will lose their vision. In this case, they survive. So basically, rods degenerate in retinitis pigmentosa followed by cone degeneration. These small molecules like PR3 uh, prevent this degeneration of the cones by maintaining rod survival. Thank you. Thank you.